What up, guys? I'm Vernon Keter coming to you again. How's everybody doing out there? Back again with another comic review for you guys. This is uh, episode uh, 77, I think. Yeah. Um, once again, it's been a good week, in a sense, for the first week of uh, comics come out in the month of December. And speaking of December, as always, I hope everybody is well on their end. As always, I hope everybody uh, is gearing up for the holidays again. Um, for me, as always, here in New York, I'm always one wish. The one thing I always want for Christmas. A white Christmas. Snow. Uh, but for the past couple of years, I haven't gotten it. And it's that sucks. <laughs> but, um... There's one more thing that I wanted to talk about. Um, you probably ask yourself, hey, where's Mr. Orpheus? How come he didn't introduce you, kid? Well, we, me and Mr. Orpheus made a deal. Uh, we'll do it like this now. Every two. So the next review and the next one I that, Mr. Orpheus will introduce me. And then I just do it myself, basically. So, <laughs> um, And also, I wanted to give a shout out. Um, as well. Um, haven't done a shout out in a while, but I think it's time to do one. And this one is actually for somebody I had subscribed to not too long ago, I think about last week. And it's kind of amazing that I, I have passed her up all those times, like, or, or maybe, I don't know, I've seen her around and then I'm like, okay. And then I'm like, stupid <laughs> um and that's comic uno you've probably heard of her right if you haven't you're going to very good very interesting and very delightful person to listen to um besides i love that opening of her is badass <laughs> um i got my mentor blue goblin on that and so comic uno if you're listening you should subscribe to my mentor blue goblin 101 he He's got me into doing these reviews, and he just subscribed to you as well. So that's another thing. Um, and if you you want to know where his you can links will be in the description as well. Um, I follow her also on Twitter and things like that. She does a lot of reviews, and she does reviews and also different types of uh, stories, like types of vids. Like the last vid, I I pretty much watched all her vids up to date now. Um, not all of them. She's got over 600. I'm talking about that she put out this week. Um, but other than that, it was, uh, she's really fun. And, um, um, she, uh, she's a fan of certain characters that are, you know, she's a girl in my heart. <laughs> but uh, other than that, very cool girl. Um, and yeah, so the link will be in the description if you want to subscribe to her. Want to know who is Chris talking about? Yeah, you know. But uh, let's get on to the comics. And as always, as I do pretty much every month, change the the uh, premise, the you know the how I showcase my comics. Um, this week, this month in December will be it'll go Marvel, DC, end with independent. That's okay with you guys. Let's get it started. All right. So we'll kick it off with none other than, boom, all new X-Men number three, uh, Bendis. The consistency is still there. You know what I'm saying? It's still there. Um, Stuart Imont, um, his, his artwork is good. Um, we're seeing a lot of things coming now with the uh, starting to be broadcast. For example, the cover, badass cover. We're starting to see... Now it makes sense of why Cyclops, his costume is going to change a little bit now. Well, it's going to change, uh, especially when they do Uncanny uh, X-Men, which I won't be picking up. Not a big fan of Chris Baccio's artwork. Um, but all those who were a part of the Phoenix Five, their powers have gone wonky, crazy. They're just flipping out. For example, for example the bitch, Emma Frost. She can't, she's not, she can't read minds no more. All she seems to have now is her diamond form, her secondary mutation. Magneto's magnetic powers are not really working up to par. And he wasn't even a part of the Phoenix Five. But being around them and being hit by, you know, 
when Cyclops is okay. Magique seems to be the only one that seems to be enjoying her new found abilities where she has kind of she can fully control the limbo limbo now so you give the crazy girl full control over limbo you know um and we know that some we know colossus is going to have problems too when uh cable and x-force come out next week got to pick that up um but uh we also get to see a lot of things cyclops for example acting like a complete complete piece doing a whole 180 from what he was like in X versus uh, A versus X consequences. Now he's saying when they break Emma Frost out, he's saying this now. I'm sorry, Emma. I that wasn't me. It was the Phoenix. And she's like, you know what? Fuck you, Cyclops. You did it. You know it was you. No, it wasn't me. I love you and everything. So they're completely done. The break. The 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 relationship between Emma and Cyclops is done. Huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> but um, he's and then I love how they break it. Break uh, uh, Magneto breaks it down for him. Like Magneto's like, you know, I've done some things in my time too, and I always felt like blamed it on other people. But you did this, Cyclops. You did this. You killed Professor Charles Xavier. Stop it. Stop it. I, I didn't do it. When are you going to grow a set, dude, and take responsibility for what you did? You did it. Not nobody else. Don't blame the Phoenix. Don't. Cyclops, you did it. And that, that was my problem with that. I'm like, dude's not taking responsibility. Step up. If you want to step up, step up. Be a man. Take responsibility. And of course, they showcase where the next, um, where they're supposedly their base of operations is going to be. And I got to agree. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, you're going to call this place the X Xavier School? I'm not going to spoil what that is. But it's the ending that kind of gets me good because we see dun 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 the confrontation between two factors. But very good. Bendis. Doing a very good job. But unfortunately, Bendis, I will not be picking up the other book that you're going to be writing, Uncanny X-Men. Like I said, not a big fan of Chris Baccio's artwork. Okay. Next up, my favorite of all time, Hero, World's Greatest Superhero, Amazing Spider-Man, number 699. Yeah, we're getting down to the wire, guys. Um, I'm scared. I'm really scared. But uh, in this issue, without spoiling too much for you, because I don't want to spoil too much, we find out how Doc Ock did what he did at the last issue. And I'm talking like Ric Flair. Why? Okay. <laughs> um, which was very interesting, indeed. Without spoiling too much. Don't want to spoil too much. But Peter is, like, really scared. And he's like, oh, my God, I got to get out of here. I got to... Oh my God! I think my liver just shut down. You know because he's in Doc, he's in Ox body. Oh my God! I'm like I'm I'm coughing up blood. Oh my God! That was my my you know my intestines. You know it's getting to the point, and he's now he's Peter's just thinking about all the stuff Doc Ock is gonna do in his body, all the stuff he might do just to hurt Peter even more. Uh, kill the Avengers, which he's a part of. Kill. Uh, Aunt May and and his, and her husband, you know, uh, uh, take advantage and almost li literally almost be like show Mary Jane like yeah we're together but you're my property. It's like what the fuck is like okay he's got to get out of here he's got to get out of here and he gets a little assist from some people but before that and I skip I'm sorry I skipped ahead before that we see that. Kirk Connors, the lizard, Kirk Connors is trapped in the lizard's body now. He is not the lizard lizard persona. He's the he's technically the lizard, but he's is Kirk Connors persona in that body that we've known about when at the end. And he's talking to Doc Ock, which he thinks is Doc Ock, and he's telling him, and Peter's like, Oh my god, Kirk, I'm sorry. I I I can't believe that's really you. Everything I he's not telling him that it's Peter, but 
he gets a little assist from some, uh, not a reliable source, but fellow villains. The Scorpion, Matt Gargan, Maury Bench, I Joe man, and I will agree with Comic Uno. Yeah, he did look like Peter Parker, uh, Hydro Man. I was like, damn, he that could be Peter's twin brother, you know. And then of course a villain that I have not seen in years, the Trapster. And basically all basically they get they get him out, and they're like, he's like, we got to go after Spider Man. Yeah, dead or alive, right? No. I want him alive. So it's still gearing up for that big 700 issue. I still am glad to see that my favorite hero made it to 700 issues. But I'm sad that it's not going to be Peter Benjamin Parker underneath that mask anymore as Spider-Man. Yeah. Very sad. Yeah, very sad. But I'll, I'll enjoy it while it lasts. Um, we move on to Hickman's run for of Avengers. Yeah, Avengers number one. Hickman takes full range. Him and the artist's name is Jerome Opina. I hope I'm saying that name right. And um, I liked it. It wasn't something. It wasn't. It wasn't mind-blowingly special. It was just. It got your feet water. It got. It got you your mouth. To me personally, me. It got my mouth watering to see what Hickman is going to do with the Avengers because if he did what he did with the Fantastic Four, and it was a great run, and that's why I say Fraction ain't gonna pull it off. What he did with him, <laughs> what Hickman did. Fraction got a big, big, he's got to follow in some big footsteps. And personally, I don't think he can do it. But that's just me. But uh, Hickman on the first issue of Avengers. The cover is nice. I mean, there are other covers. But um, first of all, glad to see Sam Gunthry is going to be on the team. Cannonball. Love Cannonball. Um, the first issue we see, the team goes to Mars. Uh, they are investigating what's going on. We're seeing they're investigating in something that's been coming. They uh, some bioweapons have been the trajectory of it has been coming from Mars. So they're going to Mars to figure out what's going on. They are greeted and they have a battle with this group called the Garden and their leader who looks pretty much like a bull. He kind of looks like Pyron from Darkstalkers. That's kind of what he looks like. I was like, dude, looks like Pyron. Um, but um, the team is made up of, you know, Marvel likes to milk their movies. Uh, it's, it's the movie lineup right now. So it's Bruce, it's Banner, Hawkeye, Widow, Cap, Thor, and Iron Man. However, the team gets pretty much... They get beat, yeah. They get beat by this 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 group called the Garden. Um, the Garden was, seems to know them pretty well, and they the first thing you what do you do first of all when you taking out some you take out your heavy hitter take out the heavy hitters first, in a sense. They took out the heavy hitters Hulk and Thor first, and then they went after they went after Iron Man and Widow and Hulk Clint, and which was Cap was left standing. It was they they have a robot on the team and um he was like yield and hawk and you know cap cap's got that never quit attitude you know he you know I'm not gonna go out you know as long as I'm standing we still got a shot and uh, you see this robot just yield and just starts pounding on Steve in it every I'm just like oh Steve oh Steve oh Steve no. You know, and you, and you know, as a fan of Cap, you want to say, Steve, just just give it up. Please, no more. No moss. Come on. You're outmatched. But then in the back of your mind, you're like, Steve can take it, but I don't want to see it. And you just see this thing just going, bam, yield. No. Bam, yield. No. 
bam, he's just, and then at one, at about the third time, Steve can't really even get no out. And they send him back to Earth. And that's when they send, he, Steve sends out the call to make the team bigger. And we see people coming. We see a lot of people come. And um, one of them in particular was Hyperion, which I was very, I'm like, whoa, Hyperion. Gonna be on the team? Squadron Supreme member? Cool. All for that. Um, but I do know with this lineup is gonna be so big, they're gonna break the team up into group and in, into uh three into group three three teams. One led by Cap, Iron Man, and Carol Danvers. That's what I, I've heard from Hickman. That's what he said he's gonna do. But on board with Hickman, I follow this guy, love his writing, I'll follow this guy. I am on board. I'm with you to the end, Mr. Hickman. Okay, so let's move on to Daredevil, End of Days. Uh, this is part three of eight. Uh, Bendis is still rolling around the final days of Daredevil. Ben Urich going around trying to figure out what were those last words that Daredevil said before he died at the hands of Bullseye. So now... He goes to a lot of Daredevil's past lovers. The Electra, Typhoid Mary, Echo. And all of them are leading complete different lives now. Electra, no longer the Electra we know. She's a mom now. And she told Ben Urich. Don't come around, don't make me enter that world again. If you do, I'll make you sorry. You remember what I did you last time, Yurik? Yurik remembers. He's like, when she put a she threw a sigh in his back. Surprised he ain't he ain't paralyzed, but he's scared to death. And then that 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 side of Electra just turns right off and she goes, picks up her her, her son from soccer practice. He goes to Typhoid Mary. She's completely, supposedly completely cured of her schizophrenia. And she's an actress now just called Mary Walker. And she refers to Typhoid Mary in a different person. Like, that's not me anymore. Echo is a college professor now. Now, remember, Echo's deaf. She can't hear, but she can read lips very well. So I thought that was really interesting. It's like she's giving lectures, you know, giving lectures, and then... She, she has to always look at the, the clock to make sure, you know, because she can't hear the bell. You know, remember, she's deaf. Um, but she's doing, she's got a master's degree and everything. I'm like, okay, that's good. But still, the question is, what was those last words Matt said? Mana, Mapun? Um, I think that's it. M-A-P-O-N-E. They, they don't know. But still, the mystery... Thickens. Next up, Hawkeye, number five. Uh, the tape, part two. Still dealing with the tape. Remember, Hawkeye is in Manjapur, and uh, he got captured, and he's kind of at the mercy of Madame Mask. Madame Mask has the tape. She bought it from an auction when they auctioned it off. However, the Madam Mask we thought was Madam Mask ain't who it is. Not going to spoil who that is. You just have to read it. And she watches the tape and finds out what went, what goes on. However, things get plot thick because the real Madam Mask comes back and everything gets haywire from there. And it's up to Hawkeye. It's up to, well, I should say Clint because he's not Hawkeye, Hawkeye. And that's why this book is so good. And that's why is because Fraction is not writing Hawkeye. It's, this book should really be called Clint Barton. The man called Clint Barton. Because that's pretty much what it is. Um, but it was still good. It was fun. Um, we find out that the tape is actually not real, actually. There are other tapes out there that kind of showcase that it's fake. It's, it's, it's what they want you to believe. You can kind of say it's conspiracy, but uh, done by S.H.I.E.L.D. But uh, it was good. Um, very good. And once again, we see in the, the bond between Kate 
Katie Bishop and Clint. Great. Like like a lot of people saying, this is just Speedy and Speedy and Green Arrow, Ollie. In a sense, kind of is, but and it's, it's done right, done perfectly. Next up, Rucka's end to Punisher. Um, this is part two of five Punisher War Zone. Um, yeah, you can see it. It's the it's the the Avengers going after the Punisher. Um, let's break it down right now. Not all of them go after them. Him, it's just Black Widow. So we get a Black Widow Punisher fight in this. Oh boy, oh boy, right? Um, Widow knows that Wolverine told uh, Punisher that the Avengers are coming after you. She knows. She was like, you know, I, I, I saw the evidence, and we, I saw Frank leave, and you leave, you know. You was in the explosion, but you were still, you told him. And she's like, you going to tell? She's like, no. You know. Um, but bottom line, it's Widow and Punisher going at. And Widow's like, you know, saying Captain Captain Frank, you know, she's still calling him by his military name. You know, Captain Frank, you know, my, my name is, she, uh, Punisher knows who she is. She's like, I need you to come in. And we kind of get up. Frank knows he's kind of outmatched. And outclassed by the widow, he knows that. Um, so he uses his head in a sense, and he—they're in Africa, if I'm not mistaken. Um, that's where Frank has been. He's been in Africa for a while, and he's been dishing out his own justice to like all those, those you know, men, those warlords who make children soldier, child soldiers. Um, I kind of—I don't blame Frank for doing that stuff. You know, I'm like, okay. So, they if they die, they die. I wouldn't want to make a child a soldier, you know. Um, things like that, and you know, call me kind of, but you know, I kind of can understand Frank's point of view, and that's where a lot of people have been saying to Widow when they're when she's been asking about you, have you seen this man? And they're like, yeah, I've seen him, and things like that. Um, but Frank uses brings her to this village where all these sickly children and women are, and that's Widow's soft spot right there. She, He knows that she's not going to chase after him. And Widow even tells Captain America, he did that on purpose. He knew I would not, I got to get these kids some help. I'll wait for S.H.I.E.L.D. and stuff to come and help these people. Um, and uh, Cap's like, okay. And she's like, but Captain, I'll get back on the trail when I'm, he's like, no, no need. We're going to go in a different direction. Who do you see behind Cap Thor? And that right there, my friends, is where I want to know, how the hell is Frank Castle going to deal with freaking Thor Odinson? A guy who can control the lightnings himself, thunder and all that. A god. I got to know, because he ain't going to, you ain't going to bust a cap in Thor. All that's going to do is just piss him off. Frank's got to use his head, definitely. <laughs> I can't wait till that issue come out. Um, and last, the last more. Oh yeah, I forgot. Um, there was I missed and forgot one book when I was finished reading everything. I'm like, I'm missing something that came out last week, this week. Iron Man. So when I get it, I won't review it on my review next week. It, I will review it on my Tumblr account. So if you Follow me on Tumblr. The review I will review it on there. Um, so I'll I'll do I do re, I'm starting to do written reviews of past books that I may not review lately on my reviews on my Tumblr account. As but as of right now, there's only one book up there. The first five issues of an image book that I'm reading now called uh, what's it called? Uh, oh God, what? the hell is it called? It's an image book. Uh, oh, God. I can't believe I forgot the name of the book. Oh, my God. I can't believe I forgot the name of the book. Uh, but it's it's kind of like a blend of... It's basically Buffy the Vampire Slayer meets Way of the Samurai. And it's pretty good. It's really good. I, I reviewed the first five issues on my Tumblr account. So if you want to check it out, um, I'll leave the description of the link in the, in the description as well.
with the other links. But um, let's move on to X Factor 248. Peter David. Oh, God, sir. What is your problem? Like, and I mean that in a good way. Whatever you are smoking, I I want some. It needs, yeah, it needs an award. I want some because this was good. You have been doing an excellent job on X Factor. And for the last issue, we well, a couple issues before, we saw Pib the troll <coughs> get shot right in the head. Right in the head. Right, right in the head. Right in it. Now I'm sounding like JR. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> um, <clears throat> I'm sorry. I'm channeling Jim Ross through me, guys. Sorry. Big wrestling fan. Sorry. Uh, 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 but bottom line, he got shot right in the head. <laughs> and we thought he was dead. However, he, he his spirit left him, or somehow, and he is... He inhabited someone else's body. She's on the cover. Monette St. Croix M. Um, has been inhabited. Is Pib has inhabited her body, and he tells the other X Factor members like, uh, "Look, um, I'm not dead." And even the other X Factor members are like, "Yeah, he's not dead because Lorna Polaris is like, he's still breathing, guys. He's got a bullet hole in his head." But it went in and through and through. So, but still, he's still breathing. And they're trying to figure out what the hell is going on and what is the meaning of this, who's responsible, everything like that. I don't want to spoil too much for you guys. It's too good to spoil. Peter David just does a very good job. I salute him. Marvel, do me a favor. And I think me and Blue Goblin have been saying it for the past what? He's been saying it longer than me. But I've been saying it now for the past maybe six months now. Keep Peter David on this book. I'll end it there. That's my marvel. Let's go on to DC. And we'll kick it off with Batwing number 15. Been loving Batwing. Um, people have been asking me, is Batwing good? I want, should I try it out? Yes. Okay, I've said it before. If you want a character that is kind of Batman-ish, that doesn't really have to do anything with the Bat family, but is still in with Batman. This is the book. Um, he's dealing with a villain known as Father Loss. And Father Loss is able to, still dealing with this guy, he's still able to uh, he, he control people. He's got like telepathic abilities. Um, Fabian Nassiza is on this writing this time around, and I'm not even going to try to butcher that, that, the artist, if you can see that, if it focuses enough in there, um, I'm not even going to try to mispronounce his name out of, out of respect, uh, <laughs> um, but Father Lost has finally been able to take control of David Batwing, and he kind of uses Batwing to try to hurt the, 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 the police, and his one of uh, Batwing's people, his associates that helps him out, you know, as Batwing, tells him, okay, David, you, if you can hear me, I'm going to shut down the Batwing armor. Um, I'm going to shut it down, and it'll, it'll, it'll give him, like, a neural shock as well to, like, knock him out or so, so he doesn't do any more harm. And he shocks him. It's also a precaution. It was a precaution that Batman put into the armor just in case somebody stole it from David. And uh, he shuts it down, and then David's basically like, look, I know what he can do. Uh, he's, he's a telepath. He's got these psych abilities. He, he uses them on a low-frequency level that you know can't be heard by the human ear and things like that. I need something to counteract that. They come up with an idea to counteract that, but however, it has a backlash to it because if he uses too much, it'll hurt David's brain too. It'll, it'll shut his brain down. They go at it once again. David uses it, and you just see the pain, like ah. And they're all like ah. And then, but does David save the day? Yes, he does. Um, and you know, all this fair, and, you know, the bad guy gets put in jail. The hero goes away, and um, we move on to the next story. 
Um, but I think they want to keep Father Lost around because I think he would he makes a good Batwing villain. Um, start adding start adding people so we can get a rogues gallery for Batwing. You know what I'm saying? You know, but I definitely agree. I definitely will admit. I definitely will say if there's anybody, and I've said it before, if there was anybody out of Batman Inc. that deserved their own book, you're looking at them. Batwing, good stuff. If you want my recommendation, and if you appreciate my recommendation, guys, I say give it a try. A couple, a lot of the stuff is on trade now, so you can just pick it up. You don't have to start looking for single issues, but you know me, guys. I'm not really a big trade man unless I have to. Um, I usually love just collecting the, the single issues. Um, but I do miss Ben Oliver's work, artwork, because that worked a lot more than the artist now. But I, I'm not going to say I don't like Marcus too. But Marcus too didn't uh, direct, uh, he didn't uh, direct that, uh, draw that, sorry. <laughs> Uh, so we move on to Detective Comics. Um, as you know, they still keep in the, those flip uh, covers with Joker's face and then flip it over. You got whoever's the book it is. Um, I don't want to take it out. Sorry. Because <laughs> um, it's so pretty, you know. Um, uh, John uh, Lehman and Jason uh, Fabok artwork is really good. Jason Fabok's artwork is really good. It's true. It's official. Yeah, Poison Ivy and Clayface. Da 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 da. -da. Yeah, they tied the knot. Batman's like, man, he ain't. They, man, you ain't tied no knot. You, you, she's playing you. You know, you know how Poison Ivy is. Her pheromones can control any man, even you, Clayface. Where's my wife? Where's my wife? He's pounding on Batman. And Matt was like, I can't take anymore. He's like, I got to get out of here. Calls the Batwing, and he's like, okay, I got to get out of here. We got to counteract. So he comes back later on with uh, a different suit on to deal with Clayface. And he's just saying, like, I feel a little bit sorry for the guy, you know, uh, a little bit. But um, it's getting there. Where's Poison Ivy in this? Where is she? Buried alive. We Do we see the Joker in this book? Yes. He's, we see one panel of him in the dark, just... We don't see his face, but we see, we see him there. Penguin, yes. But the plot thickens later on. And I don't want to spoil too much. But it's getting to the point where it's like... Joker is, play, not, is playing for keeps. He has become more unpredictable than ever. Ever I've read Joker. This is the most unpredictable Joker... I have ever seen and read, and trust me, for this 20-year veteran of comics and been reading this guy, it's like I've never seen him like this. And most determined, yeah, he wants to hurt Batman where it hurts the most. And I'm not just talking about Batman, he wants to hurt the entire Bat family. Um, good stuff. We're going to make this real quick, you know, because I'm really more intrigued of the new creative team. And this book has gone through creative team hell. Green Green Arrow. I was about to say Green Hornet. Uh, Green Arrow, number 15. Uh, this is part one of the fall of the Green Arrow. Um, and no, no Senti. Uh, no and uh, I'm not sure who's the artist. Williams the second. Um, it's, it's basically Ollie dealing with arm dealers that are trying to make a ploy in Seattle. That's pretty much all it is. Um, nothing really fancy, nothing really too big. But I, it, it's more about, yeah, you know, Ollie's working kind of on borrowed time in terms of money-wise because his the, the company, his company was bought out. And, um, yeah, that's about it. But I, I'm more looking forward to who's coming in later, you know, of seeing who's coming in later in Green Arrow because that's what I'm looking forward to because it seems like they're going to take it back to basics or take it back to the island once again for a little bit. And I guess that's going to be the basis of it. And if this creative team does a lot better, great. But I am a fan of Green Arrow, and, I, and that's why I stick with the book. I, I do... You know, like the character, and you know, as my am my am I too loyal to the character? 
not necessarily. It's just that I know there have been a lot of people who dropped this title. And there have been books that I've dropped. I try not to drop a lot of books, guys, but I've dropped books in my time. But I, I just feel that there's potential in Green Arrow if they just get the right people on board and and just... And he could go someplace, you know? So, that's all. Right? That's all, right? Um, so we move on to Earth 2. James Robinson still does a good job. And um, I don't have a Earth 2 counterpart like my mentor Gabi has. But I've said it before and I'll say it again. The guy's a jerk and he's a dick. And I've said it before and I'm going to say it again to him. Earth 2 Blue Goblin. This is now your second strike with me. If you continue to step over the line with my good friend, my bro from another mother's, that's his review. He just lets you on board. If you step over the line one more time, that's strike three. And three strikes, you're out with me. And I'm warning you right now, you don't want you know who to come out. Because he will eat you alive. Right? Yeah, see? He said it. Um, but anyway, um, I, yeah, I told them. Don't worry about it, okay? Um, I'm talking to Hurricane. He's he's kind of getting a little there, okay? Um, this was good. Um, this is the aftermath of um, what's been going on. And you got to feel sorry for Alan. You know, he lost his lover. You know, he's still thinking about him. He says, I can't go on without him. You know, what am I going to do? You know, all this, and you feel for the guy. I don't care if he's gay or not. You feel for the guy. And you're just like, you know, come on, man. You, come on. It'll, it'll be all right. You know, you got to move on for him. Lo and behold, he's in his, now he's in his, uh, his penthouse in Manhattan, New York. And, uh, you know, all of a sudden he goes outside and, you know, just to go on his balcony and, and who's standing there out there? And uh, this cover, first of all, this doesn't happen. This don't happen. But um, uh, she is like, she tells him like, look, I. He asks, how'd you find me? How'd you know I was? And she's like, look, it wasn't really hard. I, I do this kind. I do that stuff for for a living. I know how to. And she goes on like, you just miraculously come back from a train accident. Same where they first witnessed the green green guy come from. Uh, you got the same build. You got the same height. It's like, oh, my God. She, but then it's like, way to go. You know, like, come on, seriously. I mean, we've all, I think we all as comic fans have laughed at the domino mask. It's like, really? Like, nobody can tell that that's, like, I've always laughed at it with, with Dick. All the Robins. I'm like, you guys can't tell me if you knew who him before. That's Dick Grayson. That that's Tim Drake or Jason Todd or Stephanie Brown or people like that. Unless they got a fully mask or half a cowl, how are you gonna recognize him by the chin? You know, which they've joked about in Batman the animated series a couple of times. But still, um, it's like seriously the Domino mask. It, it, you know, with all the Green Lanterns, it's like that. It's like you can't tell me that. That's not Hal Jordan or, you know, things like that. And she's just going on telling about, look, we have to, we need to join as a team. We need to do this. And, you know, Alan's like, uh, you know, whatever, I'm, I'm going back inside and things like that. And so Hawk Girl, Hawk Woman, basically shoots a, shoots one of her, takes out her crossbow and is like, look, without that ring, I saw what happened when you're not, you know, Without that ring, you're just a man. And she shoots at his ring, not at him, but the ring. The arrow goes through the ring, and it shoots at it shoots uh, the picture of him and his lover. I'm forgetting his lover's name. Um, and uh, arrow <laughs> that kind of pisses off Alan. He's like, calls the ring. It comes on. He's like, you mother. And then it's just like she's gone. 
uh, then we get more darker. From there, it gets darker in the stuff that's going on with the World Army and Terry Sloan. And then we finally get to see one of my favorite DC heroes finally see what the hell has been going on with him since he came to Earth 2. You should know who I'm talking about. Michael Holt, Mr. T, Mr. Terrific. And I ain't like it. I didn't like it one damn bit. But I'm glad that the Sandman got to him because he was actually under control by Terry Sloan. And I'm like, no, I don't want him as no lackey. I don't want Mr. T as a lackey. I don't want that. Fix him. You know, deprogram him. But what was also, was also cool in this book is that we saw a certain android that's coming. A certain android that seems it's going to be female this time, but it's still going under the name, not going to spoil it, but I'll give you the initials, RT. But it's still been good. I've been loving it. Um, I can't wait. We're, James Rob, I, I just read an interview that I'm forgetting who did it. I think it was Comic Book Resources. They talked about it. And James, Mr. Robinson is going to be bringing in a lot more classic JSA characters like Wildcat. And coming soon, Fate. Dr. Fate. Yeah, i seen the cover of Flash and the Hand of Fate coming at him. I'm like, oh! Yeah, so it's good. Um, still good. All right. And uh, we move on to the final DC book I picked up. Uh, World's Finest uh, Power Girl and Huntress and Power Girl. This is issue seven. Paul Levitz, uh, George Perez. Uh, you know, I love George Perez's artwork. I'm a big fan of George Perez. I love his artwork. Um, Hunted by the Beast of Apocalypse. Yeah, um, as you can see... Da Damien and Helena are attacked by this beast from Apocalypse, uh, some kind of wolf-like character. Um, but they're still trying to deal out who is the one stealing money from their quote-unquote father. Damien, he's not really believing that, you know, this is my sister, but it is getting there. Now, what's been the running gag that me and Gabby has been talking about in this book? Power Girl always losing her costume. This one, she don't lose it. I was like, oh my God, she didn't lose it. Um, Power Girl wasn't really shown too much. They showed like she was in Africa, in the Congo, but then that was about it. She got this satellite for some reason. I'm, I can't remember too much, but it was mainly about the two siblings. And they did figure out what was going on. But however, the end pretty much is like this. Helena tells Damien... You can't tell, because Damien says, look, father needs to know about this. She says, you could tell him anything you want, but just don't tell him about me. Okay, brother? Okay, sister. They shake hands. And it's like, hey. You know, and I, there are some people I know that don't like that way of Damien. I don't mind. I, I don't want to see Damien cold-hearted. I don't want to see him always cold-hearted. If Damien has a heart, Showcase it. Don't have him always being like, fuck you and fuck you and f you and this and that. Showcase Damon that he's got a heart, but he can be deadly at the same time. But he's there's two sides to the coin. Um, but I still think somehow down the line, there's going to be an issue where that comes, it's going to come out, or Bruce is going to find them. Come. I have a feeling it's going to be somewhere down the line. I think Bruce and Clark are going to go and confront them, the two, and be like, who are you? You know, you know. I think that's going to be. But I know there are some people that have been dropping the book. And I um, I understand um, Miss Uno. Yeah, I understand why you, you're dropping it. I can understand that. I'm, I'm not even going to sweat you on that. But um, I feel that there's... There's some. They're just. They're just holding back a lot of stuff. You don't want to throw everything out at once because then you'll be like, okay, where do I go from there? You know what I'm saying? So as always, as I do, I like to ride it through. And if that means for me to, if you, if you need for me to, hey, what's going on in Power Girl? I'm here. That's what I'll do. 
Okay, so we're moving on to independent. I got three independent, no, four, excuse me, four. Uh, one from Top Cow, and that's uh, Cyber Force, number two. Um, still, they still, I think they're going to, uh, Top Cow is still giving away the first four or five issues for free. Yeah, these are free. Um, you talk about really shaking up the foundation of Cyber Force. Yeah, Mark Silverstone definitely does it in this. Um, he nearly wiped out the entire Cyber Force team except for a couple, one of them being Ripclaw. And that's pretty much the basis of it, and Ripclaw is pissed off. You killed my wife, you killed my son, I'm going to kill those mother... You know, we see Ballistic in this as well. She makes her debut. Um, it's getting crazy, but not all of them died. There's one other person that lived from the massacre, but yeah, it was like... I'm like, damn, like you're killing off everybody. Side blade, everyone. I'm like, Jesus. Like, why are you doing that? <laughs> what are you doing? I'm like, what are you doing, Silverstone? What are you doing? But um, that's the main base of this issue right here. Is like the entire cyber force nearly gets wiped out. Except for Ripclaw, and I'm forgetting the other person. And oh and oh and Velocity. She didn't die. But still it's like, oh my god. <laughs> What are you doing? Uh, but next up, we move on to Valiant Entertainment, not Valiant Comics. But that's what they... They're still Valiant Comics to me, but they call themselves Valiant Entertainment. And the Shadow Man, number two. Yeah. Um, Justin Jordan. Patrick uh, Zerch. Zerchair. I hope I'm saying it right. Artwork is great. Um... This is still continue. This is just one. This has been just a great supernatural book to me. Um, Jackie has finally realized. You know, he's finally the the Zoa, which is the Shadow Man um, persona, has taken over, and he's pretty much got his birth right now. Now remember, Jackie's father was the original Shadow Man. Now he's taken over, and don't that covered lives up to what goes on in this book, straight up. Jackie, as Shadow Man, fighting demons and all these things like that. He gets introduced to other people that are like him, that are kind of going to be like his allies. Um, we get to see Mr. Twist, the villain that's going to be uh, be like a major factor in this book. Oh boy, it's just been really good. Um, this has just been another enjoyable rebirth from, from Valiant Comics, and I've been loving it so far, and I'm looking forward to the ending left us with a t twist, because basically, it's going to be Shadow Man versus Mr. Twist, and um, looking forward to it, um, but like I said before, if you're not on board with Valiant Comics, find a book that you may think you might like from Valiant. For me, I'm reading three of them, Shadow Man, Exo Man of War and uh, Bloodshot. Um, I've heard good things about Harbor Harbinger Har Har Harbinger. I think that's how you say it, but I'm um, I'm okay with it because those these are the three Valiant comic books that I was reading back in the day, so I know them more than I know the others. But um, still good stuff. All right. Now um, we're going on to uh, Dynamite Comics and Lord of the Jungle number ten, Tarzan. Um, sorry guys, I'm I ran out of boards and bags. I gotta get some more. Um, uh, Advit Nelson, writing is still good, and uh, Roberto Cast Castro, his artwork is still fantastic. Bottom line is Tarzan is still after the Russian super spy Nicholas Rokoff. And he's still trying to get to the mystical city of the city of gold, the Opar. Um, and that's pretty much the basis of this. Um, Tarzan finally plants his foot back in Africa. And so he's like, okay, I'm back. Welcome home. 
All right, you know what? Time to get out of these civvy clothes, rip them right off, get back into his traditional look, and he things like that. And then he meets some individuals, you know, individuals, some more individuals that you probably heard. He meets a tribe, tribe people called the Waziri tribe. Think about it. Waziri tribe, Basuli. He meets Basuli in there, and, and it was really cool. I, I thought that was, I'm like, I was like, no, that can't be who I think it is. And then he said his name. My name is Basuli of the Wazibi tribe. And who are you, white man? And he's like, Tarzan of the apes. No, he says Tarzan. He's like, are you French, Belgium? He's like, my mother was an ape. And he's like, well, Tarzan of the apes, you know, well, um, it is pleased to meet you. And that was good. But still, he's still on the trail of the Russian spy, um, uh, Rokoff before he gets to the mystical city of Opar. Um, good stuff. Very good. Very good. Very good indeed. I've been loving what Dynamite has been doing. I, how many times you heard me say that, guys? I've been loving what Dynamite does with the pulp characters, the pulp heroes. Good stuff. And we end it with Voltron, year one. Got to remember, child of the 80s, guys. Voltron was one of those com cartoons I used to watch in the 80s. Still watch this day. Um, still love it. Uh, this is year one. Remember, this is all before they got Voltron. So before Aris, before Voltron, they were just Space Explorer Squadron number 686. Bottom line is the space station that they're aboard are being attacked by these creatures known as Zombots. They're like, they're a mixture between zombies and husk from Mass Effect. That's how. That's the best way I could, I could sum it up. And if they bite you, you become one of them. And the team is dealing with that. Um, and that's pretty much what it's a base about. However, in the end, it's basically... How can I put it? Sven's days is up as the commander of Space Squadron 686. And who now gets the lead? Keith. Yeah, the person who's supposed to be leading the group. Um, however, one person is not very happy about it because in this story, he was supposed to be next to take over if Sven stepped down. Lance. And so he's like, I got to follow Keith. I, all right, I'll, I'll, let, I'll give him a try. But if he, if he messes up, I'm leaving the team. And, you know, Keith is a little bit, he's like, I, I'm not ready for this. Keith is, he's really, he's really um humbled. He's really like, look, I appreciate that. But look, I'm not ready to be leader. I'm not ready for this. Get somebody else. You know, why me? Why me? Blah, blah, blah. You know, and, you know, but Sven is like, you can do it. And here's your first mission. And, and then, uh, let me, let me just show it to you. Um, uh, let's see. Let's, I'll show it to you. Uh, here they go. Um, Sven is talking to Keith. He's like, here's your first mission. And Keith is looking at the data here on the next panel. And then they show what the mission is. Who's that? Princess Ariel and Ultron. Yeah, that was good. Um... So yeah, it looks like it's going to be good. But still, Brandon Thomas does a good job. He's doing a very good job on this book. And uh, Greg, uh, Craig uh, Kermack, his, um, his artwork is really good too. But uh, I really enjoyed, um, I've been enjoying both, both Voltron and Year One series by Dynamite. Good stuff. I just got to get some more boards and bags. Um, but I uh, hope you guys stayed with me. Um... And I just wanted to, uh, once again, say uh, thanks for listening, as always. I will be back next week, God willing, with another comic review for you guys. See what I picked up next week. Basically, yeah, how did I, one of the main things is like, what did I think of Cable and the X-Force? You know, things like that. What else, did I, you know, what else will I be picking up? But also, once again, I want to show some love and respect and shout out to uh, Comic Uno. Once again, uh, her des description of her channel will be in the description, along with if you want to read my first um, mini-like uh, 
uh, written review of that that image book that I'm talking about. I can't. It's off the top. I can't even remember it. And things like that. I will be putting up some more reviews that I've been, um, you know, books that I've been reading. I haven't been, you know, putting on my my web reviews and things like that. But other than that. Um, keep following me guys on Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook, I'm triple threat, you know, I'm, st I'm everywhere. I'm trying to, I'm, I'm, I'm on all three of those. So you can follow me there. Stay tuned here as always. I will continue to bring, deliver as much as I can to you guys. And, um, once again, this is my running kid saying peace, one love, stay tuned, keep it real guys. I will see you guys next week.